The Day Billy Fell Off the Cliff by Byron Broussard The Day Billy Fell Off the Cliff, Part 9 Billy did not find reading the book was anything like reading was on Earth. He assumed that Jessica just liked interacting with people more than taking the patience needed to read the person's book. Is it just me or are the pages about Earth life boring as fuck? Billy asked Jessica. I've come to that conclusion myself a few times. The whole darn thing takes time to dissect. I guess that's where the negative feelings come from. The work. Billy began to read about Rick. It took almost no time for Rick to adjust to the climate. And there were... It took almost no time for Rick to adjust to the climate. And there is no time. His first thoughts were that he had made it to hell. He found the black of self-reflection and began to scheme before ever leaving his cottage. Rick wanted to unite in order to establish order, and so he did. He went around to cottages with the honest intent of communicating with the community and gathered a group of 50 souls. They huddled together, spread around four cottages, The operation took no time and very little effort on Rick's part. As soon as Rick began to sense the stagnation that was arising, he went into the black of self-reflection. Rick sensed that he... Rick sensed that what he accomplished didn't change or affect anything. Permanent. Rick sensed that what he accomplished didn't change or affect anything permanent. His self-reflection image is... His self-reflection images showed him how to pass information between beings with touch, and Rick came up with a new plan. He wanted to learn life here for them, and so he did. His body walked around the group with honest intent of knowing their story. They touched and exchanged information until he reached all 50. It took Rick no time and no effort. Billy spoke then to Jessica. What's up with the time situation? He said there were ways of keeping track. Jessica's image appeared on the side of the book. She was holding a cup of coffee in her flaming hands. Some people try and keep track with those people... Some people try and keep track, and with those people, you can tell a length by how it's described. For instance, how long have you been here? Hours, days, or weeks? A person who talks in years has probably been here forever, and for myself it felt like weeks. Her image looked off to the side, then sipped her coffee. It still feels like minutes to me. There's something about there being no time that makes me feel I should already have everything I need. Jessica's image brushed her hair from her face. When are you going to tell me I was wrong about our crying skeleton being worthless? Well, it's clear that Rick currently finds himself worthless or he wouldn't look so much like a skeleton. Billy continued to read. Rick retreated into the black of self-reflection to consider his next move. He could see images of the flaming people's stories cataloged in front of each other, and they sorted themselves out into bullet points that described limits. Rick looked for limits on distance, but no one mentioned seeing any landmarks that weren't cottages and coals or the lone star. No one communicated seeing the star move from the center of the sky, and... The mention of time passing was never consistent between flaming people. Rick surmised that walking somewhere else was not the objective. Rick looked for limits on self-reflection and the sort. Rick looked for limits on self-reflection and the sorting images of people's stories. There were very few who communicated anything about the darkness of self-reflection. Rick assumed that it must be personal. The flaming women seemed to be more open about their time spent in the darkness and most 
communicated the idea of using it to feel more at home or sane. The flaming men who mentioned the darkness of self-reflection seemed to bring it up when speaking of the ones they consumed. Rick noticed one story in particular from a flaming man named Jack. Jack had come into this hell and gone on a rampage, consuming flaming women. For a while after, Jack was haunted by the voices of all the women consumed until he finally went into the black of self-reflection and became friends with them. Now they live in some sort of waking dream together. Rick's attention was then brought to the story of Landry, who used the black of self-reflection to communicate to the victim of her victim. Rick thought about the limit on emotions and was shown images of the relevant conversations. There was a lot of communication over emotions, so Rick specified his search. First, he wanted to see the limit on anger and was pointed to the flaming people who communicated having violent outbursts. The most physical damage done is holes dug in the coal-like ground, but there was also talk of how the cottages are extremely sturdy. Even though they look like flaming straw, they could not be tampered with. There were plenty of stories of people who went around consuming other people out of anger, but the most common and interesting was the reoccurring account of the war between flaming beasts and flaming men. This seemed to be some type of unifying badge of honor. Rick did not see what it had to do with anger, really, but the story of the war went hand in hand with the story of angry outbursts. Rick thought about the limit on love in this hell, and he was shown where the group's stories correlated. There were stories, there were stories of using the black of self-reflection to imagine loved ones. None of them had ever met anyone they recognized from their earth lives. Rick thought about the limit on fear and courage and was shown matching stories about skeletons and holes and winged beasts that flew around spreading fire and consuming skeletons. The last limit Rick wanted to know of was the limit of punishment. He was mainly shown the communication that if anyone is punishing anyone, they would have to punish themselves. Rick exited the darkness of self-reflection and promptly consumed all 50 of the flaming people he had gathered. It took Rick no time and no effort, just the honest intent to take them with him. Then Rick began to fly. His black flaming wings made long deep strokes through the air. The landscape from the air was endless. Flaming cottages and the gaps between them stretched out over the land in no specific patterns as far as Rick could see. The land was flat and the lone yellow star was seemingly unmoving. While in the air, wings pushed at the air in a downward move. While in the air, wings pushing at the air in a downward movement, Rick again entered the darkness of self-reflection. He greeted all fifty of he greeted all fifty passengers and asked for cooperation while he mentally built a town for them. Rick imagined an apartment complex and each soul got their own room. There was a courtyard in the middle and leisure activities. Most of the group that was at first mad about the new situation calmed for Rick. He gave them all a speech, telling them to concentrate their imaginative power to create the complex for themselves. Once they were all in accord, Rick exited the darkness of self-reflection. As soon as he exited, voices began to cry out that their homes were gone. Rick immediately went back into the black of self-reflection and put all of the souls in his bag that held his sword. The image of the apartment complex disappeared along with the voices of the group. Rick again exited the black of self-reflection and began to fly forward. Billy spoke to Jessica. It seems I'm about to find out about the flaming beasts too. Curious how the Pathfinder found himself on the path of to being consumed by me. Billy laughed at himself. 
Jessica's image appeared and she shook her head. This guy is messed up, Billy. I mean, I know we don't get to judge here, but Rick is cold. I don't like him. I agree, Billy started. But this is the best vessel to learn from if there is one. No offense. Billy hesitated. You taught me a lot and fast, but this guy is like a computer simulation going through a maze. I wonder what happens if you consume everyone you can find and put them in your bag. You should have asked to see a limit on how many souls you can fit in a bag. Jessica's image looked shocked and disgusted before it faded away. You two were made for each other. Why don't you talk to Rick instead of me? I bet you two would make great friends, Billy. Do all the experiments right. Jessica stopped speaking inside of Billy's head, and the tension was notable. Noticeable. <laughs> Billy waited before trying to explain. I apologize for believing that I am in control of my own life while I am... I apologize for believing that I am in control of my own life while I also happen to have control. I apologize for believing that I am in control of my own life while I also happen to have some control over yours. I can imagine how hard of a position you are in. Billy didn't expect an answer, so he began to read again. Rick could see red lightning flashing through the sky. The lightning seemed to go upwards towards the star, and Rick could almost see the point where the lights began. Rick flew to where the lightning came from, and it took no time to get there. <laughs> there was a flaming flying beast throwing lightning from its back towards the star. When the flaming beast saw Rick, it began to fly in a circular motion. As Rick flew closer, he mimicked the circular motion the beast was flying in. Both flying flaming monsters circled the sky, and Rick closed in on the beast, extending a hand in the manner that suggested information exchange. The flaming beast sees Rick's hand outstretched and flies away as if it had been threatened. Rick follows with the intent to catch the beast, and he did catch it in no time. Rick consumed the flaming beast in mid-flight. He entered the black of self-reflection while still in the air, and the book appeared almost immediately. Rick intended to find out about the beasts, and the book told him. This beast became himself after a flying beast attacked a group of flaming skeletons with purpose in front of him. The flaming mon the flying monsters make a red The flying monsters make red lightning by releasing souls from their bag and letting them go into the sun. The monster had made multiple trips from the ground to the sky, releasing souls in the form of lightning. This beast did not know the effects or purpose, but did understand that nothing the flaming skeletons were doing made any difference, and the flaming humans were only good at fighting against the flaming beasts. This beast had understood that flaming humans did not understand and could only learn from experience that the flaming beasts were not really their enemy. This beast was talking to Rick in loud, clear words. Let me join the souls I've consumed to the star. Let me join the souls I've condemned to the star. It's the only ending I can foresee. Rick silenced the flaming beast's voice that was talking inside his head. He exited the black of self-reflection and was hovering in the air a few feet above the cottages. There were flaming people starting to gather around the sight of Rick as a flaming beast, flapping his wings and looking down at them. Rick reached into, his, into the bag on his back and grabbed for the group he consumed before. As soon as he gripped the souls, the lightning escaped from his back and shot towards the star in the sky. Rick unsilenced the flaming beast he had consumed. You could have sent me with them. The beast was, be the beast was begging to be released. What purpose have you found? What is it we are here to do? Rick asked his new prisoner. 
Rick looked at the flaming men and women below him who watched in awe as the lightning had escaped from Rick's back. Tell me what you've learned, prisoner. Rick's huge flaming black wings flapped effortlessly in the sky. Then Rick consumed every flaming person that could currently see him. There were 20 souls that Rick collected in no time and with no effort. He entered the darkness of self-reflection, then quickly reacted recreated the scene of the flaming cottages in coal-like road. He entered the darkness of self-reflection, then quickly recreated the scene of flaming cottages in a coal road. Each of the twenty souls were in the position they were in before they were consumed. The difference in the self-reflection images and what they had known as hell was the image of the prisoner standing on the coal-like on the coal ground in front of them. The prisoner looked nervous among the 20 flaming humans that were slowly surrounding him with swords drawn. Rick shouted over the scene at the prisoner, What did you learn? The image of the prisoner being attacked by 20 flaming humans was extremely entertaining for Rick, but Rick was mostly interested in the information. Rick took the 20 souls and put them in his bag before exiting the darkness of self-reflection and promptly making the souls into a lightning streak. Rick knew that nothing... Rick knew that not being a part of the lightning was way more torture for the prisoner than his image being defiled. What do you think happens when you turn into lightning? Rick asked his prisoner and got no response. What can you tell me for your freedom? Speak and be released to whatever hell you so desire. There was a slight pause and the flaming beast inside of Rick began to speak. The prisoner spoke with more certainty than his book portrayed. Someone is always going to be creating lightning. It's the religion down here. You either create the lightning or you become the lightning eventually. The flaming beasts have a lightning code that gets broken every so often. There was a pause here, and Rick listened to the sound of the lone star wind in the sky. Most souls you interact with here have stories of the war, but the thing is, those are all separate events over creating lightning. As a flaming beast, we are frightening in appearance and easily mistaken for adversaries. So... Those of us who are smart only prey on skeletons and try not to be seen by humans. Rick was cruising through the sky in huge circular motion, looking out for lightning while his prisoner cried freedom. There was this one time I gathered a bag of 500 souls. I prayed on skeleton fire pits that were deep enough to fit me inside. I would fly over the cottages looking for signs of skeleton burial and when I'd find a hole I'd quickly drop into it. The prisoner cleared his throat. I released the biggest streak of lightning I had ever seen. Even the sun seemed to get bigger. Rick looked towards the star in the middle of the sky questioningly. The wars happen when the flaming humans find flaming beasts consuming flaming skeletons or Even more so when flaming humans begin getting consumed by the flaming beasts. Either way, humans are both too aware and too stupid to understand our lightning religion. I don't think most flaming humans even see the lightning. Rick put his prisoner in his pack and released him as lightning. Rick flew down to the ground and by the time he landed he was again a flaming human. The flaming beasts have a religion, a superstition, Rats on a wheel, are we? He walked into a cottage that had two flaming women camped out in the corner. Rick walked to the free corner and sat with his legs curled under him. Why? 